Hi, I'm Jason Blake, and welcome to this issue of PEI News Watch. I'm here with Liliana from our Latin American division. And Liliana, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jason. Liliana, why don't you talk a little bit about um, uh, yourself, your role, um, how long you've been with PEI, and what you do for the PEI Association? So thank you, Jason. Yes, Liliana Cruz here. I'm the Senior Director of Latin America. I've been with PEI for almost five years now. And I'm responsible uh, for the strategy that we are implementing to serve the Latin American market and the Caribbean. Everything related to our Latin American members is under my umbrella. And that includes the resources that we provide, the service that we provide. I'm also responsible for expanding our presence in this region and to representing PEI uh, with entities and governments. Oh, great, great. Well, Liliana, the members sure appreciate all you do for them and you do a wonderful job for PEI. Um, last year was just a phenomenal year for the Latin America folks. And, uh, you know, the, our membership in Latin America grew over 10%. Uh, what do you think caused that growth? Yes, 2023 was a wonderful year for us in Latin America. And I consider that was the result of working every day to add value to the Latin American market. And we did it in different ways. So we have more and um, better resources developed specifically for the Spanish speakers. We have now we closed 2023 with 135 resources in Spanish. And uh, we expand what, uh, our presence in uh, more countries to more countries. And uh, during 2023, so now we have members in 25 countries. Um, what else? I think the interaction with the current members, it was very, very important for that success and to, to create a long term relationship with them. That was really, really important and uh, how we can help them to grow their business. And uh, Finally, I, and I have to say this, the marvelous contribution that we have from some members in Latin America, that uh, they were part of the Latin American Ambassadors Program, and they were part of the Latin American Committee. Yeah, that ambassador program, uh, your folks are just way engaged in that, and I'm pleased to see that they're really uh, bleeding the, the PEI membership there. It's really fantastic. Well, we, you know, speaking of uh, that and just participation, you know, I, I think back to the PI convention last year, and I had such a great time um, spending some time uh, with the with the folks. And um, you know, you just had great participation at that event. Um, how do you encourage uh, Latin American members to to get involved in PI? Well, I always say to the members that uh, I find like two different ways to be involved with PI. If you see PI as a source of information. And uh, with that, you keep up to date about what is happening within the industry and the market. That uh, That is one option. But the, if you decide to go further and uh, you use the membership to grow your business, and then you have different opportunities with PEI to use the membership and uh, really get involved in, in, in PEI. So that is with, if you participate, how you do that? With, if you participate with all the programs, the conferences, events, uh, networking groups, committees, activities that we have, in that way, um, that they can really, really get involved with what we are doing and um, help their their business grow. Well, Liliana, you have a, a, a challenge for you, really, because you know uh, when you look at South America, Central America, um, you know there's separate countries, um, diverse. And, um, you know, each country uh, has its own specific challenges. But let's talk a little bit more about the common themes that we've seen throughout Latin America uh, in our membership that we really can utilize in the system. What are some of those main themes that um, ring, ring a bell for all our membership in Latin America? You know, Jason, I have the opportunity um, to talk with different companies in different countries on a daily basis. And that provides me with really great um, insights. And I find like three common things. Well, the first one I would say is the supply chain challenge. Although the pandemic 
was in 2020. After that year, majority of the countries have experienced an increase in prices. And they have to deal with the fact that this increasing is transferred to the entire supply chain. And so that will be one. The second one, uh, I think, is everything around regulation, because they have in the different countries and in different levels, they have regulation changes and the implementation of them. Uh, I think that's a common thing. Um, and uh, more, if you think now that more and more countries are talking about EV, hydrogen, and all these new side and how they implement that in them. So, and uh, the third okay. one I would say is workforce. You know, right, workforce. Uh, workforce and the key thing. And uh, in the workforce, I think the challenge becomes in having uh, long-term employees with the proper training and servicing in the best way possible. And that is a challenge of every day. That's what I find. Well, you know, Liliana, we, you know, we had an opportunity to, to visit, uh, you know, Columbia last year and, um, that was fantastic. I got a lot of great information and we, we started building some, you know, um, additional strategies. So, and we heard a lot of, um, you know, wants and needs, um, of our membership and, you know, the supply chain was definitely one of them. I remember talking about that. I also remember talking, um, about the workforce issue, but, you know, um, one of those things came up, uh, that, you know, when we talk about supply chain, um, I think that, you know, uh, we have some opportunities opportunity to probably revisit some of these folks in, in Latin America and develop some more uh, supply relationships. Can you talk a little bit about um, this trade mission that we've been uh, kind of focusing on maybe for 2025? That trade mission that you mentioned, Jason, I think it's a result of what we have been talking and identify with the different members is that if we have an opportunity and if we have an opportunity to bring together and we want to be that connection between companies in the USA that are interested to have business in Latin America and these Latin American companies that want to make business with these companies located in the USA, we can be that connection. So thinking about that, what we have now in our plate is that uh, in 2025, we expect to have a trade mission where we are going to bring a uh, trade mission in Latin America and bring together these type of companies and uh, members. So we more information, you will receive more information if you are watching this and uh, we are going to communicate exciting things about that trade mission that is going to be in 2025. Well, we talked a lot about growth in Latin America and I know you and I have had a discussion about, um, you know, we got, we've built some critical mass here and, um, we, you know, we're focusing a little more on how do we bring, you know, all our membership together. And, uh, you know, I'm excited about, you know, some of the things that are happening this year, but in, you know, in a couple, in, in 2025, um, you know, we're looking at engaging our members and getting them into, uh, you know, maybe coming to our executive summit and offering, um, you know, some bilingual um, uh, translators at our executive summit, which so which should be fantastic. Um, we have to talk about unity and, and bringing folks together because I think we're successful as one. Um, so that'll be really cool in uh, 2025. You know, final thing I'll ask you, Liliana, is uh, what are uh, the strategies that you believe are crucial for, for building these strong relationships between um, us and the membership uh, with local stakeholders and businesses in Latin America? Yeah, thank you for that question, Jason, because uh, if we want to be that connection, as I mentioned before, all, all these things that we are doing are really, really important. And uh, you mentioned uh, now things that we have been thinking about how we can take this opportunity to learn together and uh, the things that we are planning are part of that. I think the key word that we have here is adaptability. We need to have, to have a good adaptability to understand the needs that we have in Latin America and uh, the needs that, that we read in our members and based on that, develop more resources and, resources and things. So based on that, things that uh, we can expect in 2024, and uh, we are expecting to have a regional event in Mexico, and uh, we expect to have a great Latin American program during convention, everything in Spanish. And in 2025, 
We we just mentioned the trade mission, but we expect as well to bring a Latin American presence to the PEI Executive Summit. And uh, that will be fantastic because it's going to be the first time that we are going to have simultaneous translation and uh, for, for Spanish speakers. And uh, we are going to have um, specific specific content and activities for for these activities that are going to to attend this event and this is going to be a new thing and I'm really excited about what it comes with that yeah that's gonna be that's gonna be fun that's gonna be fun and yeah. um well I, you know if you wanted to leave our membership with you know one thing to think about this year for for 2024 in Latin America what what would that be I would say, and uh, if I talk to our Latin American members and uh, all the co or the companies that want to join PEI in Latin America, I would say that think uh, about PEI and all the opportunities that you have to grow your business there. And uh, think how you take advantage in the best way possible of the membership that you have at this moment. And uh, don't be shy. And uh, don't be shy and uh, participate in everything that we are doing because we really like to have things that work for you. But that would be my, my key message. Well, Liliana, that was fantastic. Thanks for all that useful information. I'm looking forward to 2024 and 2025 seems to be fantastic. I'd like to thank all our members for watching us. I'm Jason Blake and thank you for watching PI News Watch.